بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اي رحبت في الله this is the last, the the third sitting of our julus or sittings and halaqat before the holy month of ramadan <coughs> in preparation for ramadan to gain some some of the ahkam some of the rulings pertinent to ramadan and some of the benefits of ramadan ana bi hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam لا تقدم رمضان بصوم يوم ولا يومين إلا رجل كان يصوم صوما فليصومه متفق عليه. إن الحديث البخاري المسلم الحديث عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه who said that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said do not proceed Ramadan by a day nor by two days except for the man that used to fast or that it's his habit to fast uh, the, these days then he can fast it meaning that the Prophet وسلم, said that <clears throat> we should not proceed Ramadan, the the first, uh, the last days of Shaban, <clears throat> by fasting. So, meaning, if we've come to the end of Shaban and we're a day or two uh, before Ramadan, we should not fast unless it is someone's habit to fast. It falls maybe the day or two before Ramadan is a uh, Yom Khamis. Which and it's someone's habit. They always fast chamis. Not that they just decide to fast chamis, but it means it's their habit. So if it's their habit, then they can fast. And the ulama speak about this, and these are some of the issues. So we're going to look at this hadith and some of the benefits of this hadith from the fiqh of this hadith, from the understanding of this hadith and some of its issues. One of the issues: fi hukum taqdim Ramadan bi som yomin o yomain. The first mess, Allah. The first issue. Ayyul Habiti Fillah, pertinent to this hadith, pertinent to our fasting, uh, because it's Shaban now, <coughs> and it is recommended to fast during this month as much as possible. And uh, one of the masail or issues pertinent to this is what is the ruling with regards to preceding Ramadan by fasting a day or two before Ramadan. What is the hukum? The apparent meaning of this text shows al-dahir al-nahi is that it is uh, uh, prohibited. Because as we mentioned before, that whenever we have a, an al-amr yufidu wujud, wal-nahi yufidu tahrim, tahrim. That whenever we have a commandment in the shara from the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu the general and the asl of that amr the foundation or the basic ruling is that it's an obligation. When anything you read, if you read a text from the Quran and the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and it's a command, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kutiba alaykum siyam, uh, fasting is prescribed for you, meaning that it's an obligation. Not that it's mustahab, not that it's recommended, but it's an obligation. Okay? This is the asl, the origin of a command in the shirk. And likewise, the origin of a nahi, when you hear a prohibition, is that it is dalil, that that thing is muharram. It's tahrim. A nahi yufid al wujub. Yufid al tahrim. That whenever something is prohibited, or something is uh, yeah, mentioned as a uh, prohibition in the shara, this is evidence that it is uh, muharram, that is impermissible to do. Uh, so, ahabati fillah. This is the asl of this uh, in this hadith that we mentioned is that it shows that it's a prohibition. The Prophet sallallahu said, "La to sum." Qala Rasulullah sallallahu "La tuqaddim Ramadan bi sum yomin wala yomain." He said, "Don't proceed." So this is nahi. 
This is a negation, or this is a prohibition. He said, do not proceed Ramadan. Uh, do not uh, fast preceding Ramadan a day or two preceding Ramadan. And then he said, illa, he made a stithna, unless it's the fasting that one of you regularly fast. So then that shows that that takes that, that tahrim, uh, it gives a, an exception to that hukum. And likewise, here's what the ulama say with regards to this issue, this mas'ala. As the ulama, they have two uh, different statements with regard to this. There are two different views or opinions with regards to this uh, mas'ala, this issue that we're mentioning. The jamhur, meaning the majority of ahl ilm, majority of the scholars, say that this nahi here mentioned in this hadith is for lil karahiyah. Meaning that this prohibition is karahiyah, meaning that it is makru. Meaning, so the means majority of the ulama with regards to this hukum and this hadith by preceding Ramadan by a day or two, they say that it's not haram that you get a sin because if you say something is haram, meaning if you do it, you receive a sin. And if you leave it, you receive a reward. Whereas if something is makru, that it's disliked, there is no sin by doing it and there is uh, but there is reward by leaving it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is what it means to be makru so ahabati fillah majority of the ulama say this is the majority opinion is that this nahi here in this hadith is not li tahrim, not for that this is haram to do this, but that it is disliked to do so. And it is well known from the madhab of the Hanabila as well uh, that if a person fasts uh, before Ramadan by a day or two days, then there is no sin upon them and that their fasting is accepted. And Imam Tirmidhi also mentioned this. He said, Al-amal ala hadha inda ahl al-ilm. Karihu an yata'ajil ar-rajil bi siyam qabla dukhu shahar Ramadan. So, <coughs> Imam Tirmidhi mentioned that ahl al-ilm, they hold this, uh, that many ahl al-ilm, they hold this view that it is disliked to proceed for a person to proceed uh, fasting uh, Ramadan a day or two before Ramadan enters uh, that, that it is uh, disliked to do so and this was also the view of Imam Ahmed the other view with regards to this is that it is haram or impermissible and the nahi ala aslihi li tahrim so this view holds, the ulama that, that hold this view say that the, the affair, it stays in its, its origin, meaning an, a nahi here remains prohibited, that this issue remains a prohibition. And this is the madhab of Imam Shafi'i. <clears throat> and, some of, and many other scholars, and from the contemporary scholars, uh, in our time, like Imam bin Baz also uh, held this uh, view as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But the majority of the scholars, they say that uh, the jamhur are on, that if a person fasts a day or two before Ramadan, this is not haram, but it is disliked to do so but they, their fasting will still be accepted. And again, the Prophet ﷺ made the istithna in the hadith for the one who it is his or her regular practice to fast, and that happens to fall a day or two before Ramadan, that in that sense, they can fast it. And that is accordance to the nas, to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, and what he ﷺ said. Another issue that arises in this hadith that is relevant for us
is the ruling that if the fasting, uh, if a person proceeds fasting in Ramadan by more than uh, two days, so three days before, four days before, you know, what is the hukum there? And this, in accordance with the understanding of the uh, Nas, and this is also what the Jumhur ulama are upon Jumhur al ilm do uh, using this hadith uh, as evidence that that is uh, permissible. It's permissible, so if it's three, four days before Ramadan or what have you, that a person fasts. Most of the Shafi'iyah, well, that have a kathir in a Shafi'iyah, they hold that it is impermissible, that it is prohibited to uh, begin fasting after nis Shaban, meaning halfway through Shaban, that it is impermissible to begin fasting. So the 17th uh, or a six, 16th, <coughs> 16th of uh, Shaban up until uh, uh, the end of Shaban is impermissible according to the Shafi'iyah. And one of the evidences that they use for this, uh, for their view, is a hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, that was uh, narrated or collected in uh, Ashab al Sunan. And Imam Tirmidhi said it was Sahih, wa ibn Hiban, wa Abu Awana, wa ibn Hazm, wa Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah as well uh, held this. Uh, also held this view, it appears. That this hadith is uh, a sound hadith, and it is a, actually it's a hadith, and as a hukum murfur, meaning it, it was uh, narrated on a sahabi, radiallahu ta'ala, and this is narrated on Abu, uh, Abu Huraira, and that it is considered uh, a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi that it is uh, that he got it and was mentioned in it uh, upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi although the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi himself uh, we we don't have a hadith where he, he said this so Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who said this marfu'an إِذَا أَن تَصَفَ شَعْبَانِ فَلَا تُسُومُهُ لَا تُسُومُهُ he said that if halfway of, uh, through the month of Sha'ban, uh, if you reach the halfway point of Sha'ban, then do not fast. So this is a statement of Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and some of Ahl al-Ilm said it's da'if, but also many of Ahl al-Ilm said it was a sound hadith. So this is their evidence, the Shafi'iyah, and other than them, <coughs> who say not to fast, uh, the second half of Sha'ban up until Ramadan that this time you should not fast and they believe that it is impermissible to do so so that is the uh, the various some of the uh, views with regards to this and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best we do have a nas from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he said illa entason uh Kala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So we do have a nus to let us know that if it's a day or two before and it's someone's habit then it's okay for them to fast. So we can't say then that it's prohibited. But they are taking the, that other text which is a narration of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu which they attribute to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because it has the hukum marfu' uh, that they use that as evidence and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala knows best but possibly the safest view is to go with the Jamhur and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala knows best the safest view is not to fast when you unless that's your your habit to fast a couple of days before and the Jamhur say that it is okay if it is uh, up to three days before Ramadan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Those are some of the Masail. 
from this hadith. There are also some other issues. Uh, the another issue, and we'll, we'll stop here after this, is that the ulama also mention the hikam, hik, hikmah. Some of the hikmah with regards to this prohibition. So the ulama differ with regards to the hikmah, with regards to the prohibition of not fasting uh, a few days before Ramadan or, or and so forth. And Ibn Hajar mentions in Al-Fat, Fat al-Bari, um, three uh, different views that the ulama have uh, or three different uh, hikmas and one of the wisdoms is in preparation for Ramadan that if a person uh, one of the wisdoms that the ulama articulate and hold uh, for this prohibition is that uh, to re that a person will be in better shape or be stronger to fulfill their obligatory duty of fasting the month of Ramadan and have more energy. Uh, another hikmah or reason is in order to make sure that there is no ikhtilat and a nafla a nafl bil fard that there is no mixing between uh, the obligatory duty and uh, duties that are recommended or extra fasting so this is another one of the wisdoms and also another wisdom that they mention because Ramadan the fasting uh, is related to the ru'ya when we see the halal or the crescent moon that this is the indication of uh, Ramadan that Ramadan uh, is upon us so that uh, there is no mixing and that the uh, <clears throat> that the uh, uh, that the people can prepare for looking for when Ramadan uh, when Ramadan begins and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam